While battles over voting rights rage in Arizona and state capitals across the country, they're nothing new here in Phoenix. Back in the 60s and 70s, African American and Latino voters were routinely harassed and disenfranchised. One of the central figures was future Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, William Rehnquist. He was a leader of a Republican project that challenged voters in South Phoenix. Joining us now is Clovis Campbell, a former three-term Arizona lawmaker, director of the State Commission on African American Affairs, and publisher of the Arizona Informant. It's the state's only African American-owned weekly newspaper. His father, Clovis Campbell Sr., was Arizona's first African American state senator and fought many of the voting rights battles in the 60s and 70s. Welcome to Square, Officer. Hey, thank you for having me. Uh, I do want to let viewers know that this segment draws on excellent reporting on this period in our history by the Arizona Republic's Ray Stern. Check it out on azcentral.com. So let's get going. A few weeks ago, Republican State Representative John Fillmore said he wanted to, quote, get back to 1958-style voting. What came to mind when you heard what he said? When I heard that, I thought immediately about voter suppression, uh, voter intimidation, and uh, some of the uh, tough issues that my father and some of his uh, friends had to go through just to get people registered to vote. Now, your father moved to Arizona from Louisiana. What did he think about conditions for African American voters here compared to Louisiana? Well, uh, in his own words, he told me that this was a blessing to move from the South to uh, West to Arizona. As you can imagine, things were really tough in uh, Louisiana. So to come to Arizona and uh, experience some of the same things was not a surprise to him, but it was definitely not as bad as it was in uh, Louisiana. And so let's talk about that. What kind of issues, challenges did African American voters as well as Latino voters face at the polls here? Well, the biggest thing was, was voter intimidation. Uh, the issue of not uh, allowing people to come vote uh, at the polls was the biggest way to uh, deter uh, minorities from going to the polls was to just go in and, and absolutely intimidate them at the polls, asking them questions about reading a statement, which was totally uh, against the law. Uh, some people were told they had to pay a poll tax to come in and vote. So uh, those intimidation tactics were, were there uh, in the early uh, 50s and 60s. And your father formally opposed William Rehnquist's nomination to the Supreme Court in 1971 over a Phoenix segregation law that Rehnquist supported. What was that about? Well, uh, basically, Mr. Rehnquist supported all types of uh, segregation. He and uh, Barry Goldwaters and others were uh, definitely opposed to any type of integration in Arizona. And as a matter of fact, we know uh, that Mr. Goldwater came in, or Senator Goldwater at the time, came back from a vacation uh, to vote against any integration uh, into the uh, African Americans into the system. And while your father was a state senator, and I, I, I'm going to say this, it's kinda almost hard to believe, but Arizona's <laughs> Governor Jack Williams signed into law a bill requiring all voters to re-register. All voters to re-register. What did mm -hmm. your father think about that law? Well, uh, he, he, he obviously wasn't happy with it. Uh, because it had to go back and, 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 and get people who, who they had already registered to vote re-registered. So you look, it's, it's really similar to some of the voting uh, intimidation laws that we're putting out today. Uh, if you look at them real close, they kind of mirror uh, just what uh, that bill was like back then. And so some of these 30, 40, 50 odd bills that we see today are really uh, mirror images of what we saw almost uh, four or five decades ago. And so when you look back on the 60s and 70s, do you think Arizona has come that far when it comes to voting rights? Well, I think that um, we had made a lot of strides. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I think that there were some folks who felt intimidated uh, by the election of uh, President Barack Obama and felt that there needed to be some things done to get back to their good old days. So... Uh, yeah, I think we still have a lot of work to do now. We were headed in the right direction, but when that happened, a lot of people felt that they needed to change some voting issues, and so that's what they're doing right now, and they continue to do so after, obviously, the last election. 
And there have been calls, maybe a bit premature, but calls to pull the Super Bowl from Arizona next year if many of these voting-related bills, election-related bills become law. Would you support that? Well, I, you know, I understand how big of a uh, infusion of dollars the Super Bowl means to Arizona, but also, more importantly, that's just one game. Our, uh, our voting issues go on for the rest of our lives. So if we lose the game, so be it. Uh, I just got a call yesterday from uh, the Rainbow Push Coalition with the Reverend Jackson that they're going to be monitoring every state that has not only a football team or city with football teams in it, but they'll be monitoring their uh, the programs that the, those football teams have, whether or not they have uh, African-Americans on their board of directors and what kind of participation they have with minority vendors, et cetera. So I think that it warrants people looking into the entire process of the NFL and also the NFL making some real conscious efforts to uh, ensure that voting rights are, are, are preserved. Clovis Campbell, thank you so much for joining us.